So we'll start with the bike handling tips. And really the two basic things, the overarching thing you need to think about in the rain when you're riding is just traction. Now all your traction is going to decrease because everything is wet. And so the big points of traction that you need to think about is between your brakes and the braking surface and your tires in the road. So brakes and braking surface, there are two main types of uh, brakes, which are rim brakes and disc brakes. And I've ridden both in the winter. I rode rim for a long time. A lot of folks say that um, rim brakes aren't as reactive in the rain, and that is true. Because the rim on your bike goes all the way down to the ground, it picks up a lot more rain, a lot more dirt. Um, so versus the disc brake, which is high up, it does the same thing, but it's just higher up on your tire. So it doesn't pick up as much rain and dirt. Um, but with both of them, when it's raining out, the way to combat that is just to give it more time. Because say you start braking, that first rotation of the wheel is almost just for the brakes to wipe off that water before it can actually gain traction. So just give yourself more time to break and kind of budget that, go a little bit slower, and know it's going to take a little bit longer for those brakes to really gain traction, be it rim or disc. And again, um, either are fine for riding in the winter. You just need to be aware of just the time that it takes to stop. The second thing with traction between your tire and the ground, um, again, especially in the first little bit when it starts raining, um, the rain usually picks up any oils that have been on the ground, especially if you're in a high traffic area. So that's when it's going to be slickest. And I'm going to share my screen a second of specific things that you want to avoid when you're riding. It's just, a, it's a little cute thing I drew a while ago. Um, things to avoid uh, that are particularly slick when you're riding. So uh, leaves, because when they all, when you have a couple leaves on top of each other, they can just be a really slick surface. They get gummy, um, and metal, any sort of metal when you're riding. Um, and I go all the way around it. I try and avoid it as much as possible. Paint when you're riding as well. White stripes on the road can be especially slick. If you're going over green paint that you often see in uh, bike lanes, that has, um, it's a special kind of paint that has, it's kind of like sandpapery, so you still have traction there. But I try and avoid going over white paint as much as possible or like living on any white paint stripes. And the last one is puddles. Uh, as fun as they are, and even if you have all your rain gear in, I would avoid them because you don't know how deep puddles are. You don't know if there's a huge crack at the bottom. I've definitely had that before. <laughs> I'm like, oh, it's going to be fine. And then you, you feel it hit. Um, and, but with any of these, when you're riding, if, say, you already you are going over a metal grate, you couldn't avoid it for some reason, the best thing to do is to just keep going forward. Don't try and turn while you're already on the object, either with your front wheel or your back wheel. Just try and slow as much as possible before it and then go right over. I also wouldn't break when you're on it. So try and slow before, then just head straight over. And that's the best way to set yourself up for success if it's a slippery surface. But those are really the two main things to think about of how your riding is going to differ. All the rest of it is going to be staying warm, staying warm uh, in different ways or maintaining your bike. Does that all make sense as far as how your riding may change? So anything in the chat, any thumbs up, thumbs down or questions? Oh, so many thumbs up. Great, okay. I'm going to move on then to um, bike maintenance if that's all right with everybody. Great. So bike maintenance in the rain. Probably the chain, the chain and the brakes are the two biggest things to think about. That's usually what I think about most in normal maintenance, uh, as far as an everyday commuter, if you're doing any sort of maintenance, chain and brakes, but then especially in the winter time. Uh, brakes, because what we just talked about, uh, they're going to be reacting slower because of your surface air, of your traction on your surface. 
So I always make sure that my brakes are nice and close, really dialed in, especially during the winter riding to set yourself up for success. Also, I clean my rims more often, um, and not all the time, but I think if I, if I especially notice that my brakes are pretty slippery or not gaining traction, then when I get home after a rainy ride, I just go with a rag over my whole rim on either side and clean them off. And I also clean off those little brake pads. If you have disc brakes, um, discs are easier to get a bit contaminated you have to be more careful about that because then they won't be effective at stopping. So when you clean your discs, which I recommend doing, you also want to use um, isopropyl alcohol to really get them clean, clean, because even the oils on your fingers can contaminate them. But both for the brakes, just make sure they're clean and really dialed in. As far as your chain, you want to keep your chain nice and lubricated in you know, all time. But during the winter, since it's raining, it just gets washed off pretty darn quickly. So you just want to keep it, you're going to have to put on lubricant more often. And cleaning your chain is not a very scary thing once you get used to it. And we have a video for it on um, Instagram, I believe, and YouTube uh, that you can clean your ways to go about cleaning your chain. Something that I'd recommend though, looking into as an option is there's different kinds of chain lube. Uh, the normal stuff is pretty thin. It can come off a little quickly, but other stuff uh, will stay on a little, little bit longer. It's kind of gunky and wet it's called, but something to keep in mind with that is it will also pick up more dirt and grime. So, you know, pros and cons of both of them. Uh, but either definitely works. Um, one last thing to think about potentially when you're coming into the rainy season is that's when I usually make sure my braking and shifting cables are lubed. Um, and it's an easy thing to do once you get used to it, but it's a little hard to explain. So I'd recommend looking up some videos or just asking your shop. Um, and it's not something that you need to do very often though. I'd focus more on the chain and on the brakes. So that's really it for the maintenance as well. Any questions on that piece of it? Our thumbs up, ready to move on? Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Great, okay. Um, oh yeah, and so we'll, back, we'll put this in the maintenance section, geary section. But let's talk now about tires and fenders. That's a question a lot of, a lot of folks had about, all right, am I supposed to use specific tires? Um, do I run them at a different pressure? Can I use slick tires, et cetera? <laughs> Pardon. Ah, and so the answer is you can really use whatever. You can use whatever, but there are better and worse um, things that will give you more traction. I should say as well that most of what I'm speaking about now has been learned just through experience. I just started out biking in jeans and a sweatshirt, no fenders, um, and you just learn as you go. Um, and, and it's been over, I think, seven years as a commuter that I've found what works for me and what works for you may be different. And that's great. There's all these different setups, all these different ways that work. And so I bring this up because for the past six years or so. Um, I commuted all the time on a road bike with slick tires, even during the rainy seasons, and it was fine. I never really had any issues due to the rain, a couple of like little scary moments, but you can make it work. So I wouldn't say you need to go out and buy X, Y, Z before riding the rain, just start with whatever you have. Um, but now we're gonna look at if you have the options to purchase the ideal tire for the rain, what would you recommend? So I'm gonna, oh, I'm still sharing, sorry. Um, so we're going to look at these tires here. This is what I usually ride, which is just a slick tire, um, which I recommend during the summer. Um, if you're on a road bike, that is fine. Um, but here we're gonna look at two different types of tires. This is a mountain bike tire. You see all those big nubbies coming up, all those tread. 
And this is what's called inverse thread or a, uh, siping, it's also called S-I-P-I-N-G. And in a rainy weather riding, ideally you'd go for something like this because if you were to go with a mountain bike tire, would you think like, oh, there's a lot of, you know, all those little nubs on there will really grip. But there's not then a lot of tire actually on the ground as you're riding. You know, it's only those little nubs that's hitting versus all of this um, tire or the tire with siping. And you want siping because especially if you're riding something wide, say for example, on your cars. The reason that we don't have smooth tires on the cars for a number of reasons, but one of them is in rainy weather, water can get caught underneath the tire and that's when you start to hydroplane. You don't need to worry about that so much on a bike because your tires are not very wide, but the siping on this, which is the little grooves there, when you're riding over the water, it pushes the water out to the side and so it gives you that traction just with the ground itself versus resting on the water. I did just put a tire like this on the back of one of my bikes and I can definitely notice a difference in the rainy, rainy riding. Um, so that's what I would recommend to look for. It's called siping, inverse tread. Um, yeah. Also, as far as pressure on your tires. Some folks like to decrease the pressure during the winter time because then again, it's more of the tire on the riding surface. I always recommend to keep it between the min and the max PSI. Um, because especially when you're riding at a lower PSI, there's more of a potential to have pinch flats. So think about how you're riding. Are you putting a lot of weight on your bike? Is it just you? Um, and, and just try out some different pressures. Are you just staying on the road or are you gonna hop over curves, et cetera? You, you know you're riding, um, and so just play with it a little bit. So I'm gonna stop sharing here. Sorry that I forgot that I was sharing earlier. Um, I think that's all of my suggestions for tires specifically. Does anyone have any, I'm gonna take a look at the uh, tires I mean, take a look at the chat a second to make sure I'm not missing anything. Let's see. Sorry. Oh, great question, Ben. How frequently do you do the maintenance tasks? Um, that's a great question. As far as cleaning your chain, wiping down your rims, so I ride and I ride probably every day. I don't have a vehicle. And so it's where I need, how I get to where I need to go. And I probably only clean my chain even in the winter once a week, once every other weeks. I don't do it much more frequently, but I'm also only riding on normal, uh, on paved roads, really. I'm not experiencing a lot of gravel, so it doesn't get very dirty. Um, and, and as far as wiping down my rims, yeah, maybe once a week, once every other. But really, it's going to depend how often you're on your bike, what kind of surfaces you're on. I know it's much nicer to get like, here's a hard and fast, but it depends on the type of riding you're doing. Um, let's see, did we discuss how much air in the tire? Yes, great question. I'd always recommend staying between the minimum and the maximum. Um, but during the winter time, a lot of folks like to go at a lower tire pressure closer to the minimum because then there's more tire actually on this break on the road surface um, but make sure to not go under the minimum because even when you're getting close it's a higher risk of pinch flats especially if you're running really thin tires so that answer your question uh suzanne and ben did that answer your question great excellent Excellent, great, thank you for the responses. So now we're going to talk about fenders a little bit. Fenders are awesome. Everybody should have fenders. That was the biggest thing when I started riding and finally was like, I'm going to invest in fenders, which for me investing, I think they're under 
forty dollars, but I was like, that's investing. Um, made a huge difference, huge difference. And there's some pretty inexpensive fenders too that are essentially just like long pieces of hard plastic that are very easy to put on your bikes. Um, and they just go on your back wheel. They're under 20 bucks. I think they're like $15 at the most. Uh, so really put fenders on your bike. I'm going to show a couple different types of fenders a second. And then we're going to talk about um, how to choose what's right for your bike. So I'm sharing this again. So you'll notice here, these are pretty easy fenders to put on your bikes. Um, and he has one, they have one on the back, one on the front. I have ones that are very similar. I just put them on very easy, uh, super light, especially if it's a bike that you're not putting a lot of weight on or you don't need wraps. That's a really easy option. Here's another option of fenders, a more full coverage fenders. Um, and if you don't want to take them on and off very often, or you want to have room for these racks, that's a really great choice. A lot of folks do mud flaps at the bottom too then. And yet another option, uh, you see that these are attached directly to the frame. Um, and, and so you don't necessarily even need uh, eyelets on your bike, which brings me to a, um, a good thing to talk about about fenders, which is you want to look at both your bike, what you're going to be attaching it to, um, and to see what do you have as far as eyelets? Where do you want to attach it? Um, is your rack going to get into the way? And then think about, uh, do I want to be able to take them on and off quickly? Are they going to live here all year long? Um, and what sort of riding style do I want to do? Do I want something heavy? Something to also think about is how much clearance do I have um, in my fork or by my brakes for fenders? That was a big thing for me for a while is that I didn't have a lot of clearance, so my options were limited. So look at the bike that you have, what you want to put your fenders on and ask yourself those questions. Also your fenders should be like seven to 10 millimeters wider than your bike tire. So just buy a little bit, but you don't want a fender, of course, that's more narrow than your actual tire. Let's see. There's a question in the chat. Let me look at that a second. Ah, <laughs> great question, Jennifer. So my bike came with fenders, but the back still sprays up directly behind me. That's so annoying. I'm sorry for that. Um, there is, there are usually mud flaps. So and I'm gonna share that photo again. There are mud flaps usually, you'll see on this picture, um, and they have mud flaps at the bottom. And so it could be that your fender is pretty short here in the back. Uh, like if it is something like this and not very long, maybe that's where you're getting spray coming up. Um, and that could also be if your fender is a little too narrow, maybe that's where that is coming from. Um, and, and I think it's definitely, oh, I never shared it. I'm sorry. I'm still getting used to this. Um, and, but this is what I was talking about, that there's mud flaps here at the back of the tire and at the back of the front. Um, and so it could depend on the type of fenders you have. You could also maybe put mud flaps on existing fenders. Um, and, but that's something that's really changeable. Um, and it might be something that you could get different fenders for. Um, and, but I'm, I'm imagining that if it's coming up, you could probably put mud flaps on or just, uh, my go-to is just bring it into a bike shop and see what they say about it. You know, that's why I think brick and mortar stores are so important, you know, is that you can actually go in and talk to folks and say, look at this thing, what is happening? And they can say, ah, yeah, well, we can do this. You know, uh, did that help to answer your question, Jennifer? Yeah, great, awesome. 
So any other questions about fenders before we move on to other gear such as uh, jackets, lights, boots, all that? Thumbs up, good to go. Great, I got one thumbs up, we're gonna move on. Okay. Oh, let me take a drink a second. I talk very quickly, so if I need to repeat anything, I will, I am sorry. Great, okay. Let's talk about lights a little bit. So lights are great. They're very important. There's something that I really recommend um, investing in uh, because there's not much worse feelings than being in the dark and kind of white knuckling it while not knowing where you're going. Um, and, and with lights to think about what kind of riding you're going to be doing. For example, um, most of my riding is in town. Um, and so most of my areas are well lit, but there are some that are not like the Burke Gilman at, in the evening at different points. Um, and so you want a light that will shine bright enough that it can actually illuminate what's in front of you versus a light that's just for being seen by other um, vehicle users or pedestrians. Also think about like if I was riding at night in the woods or on trails, I'd want something even brighter. Or, and as well, how do I want to power this? Am I fine with battery powered? Uh, am I fine with taking it on and off my bike a lot to um, plug it in? <laughs> that, that's the word, just plug it in. Also, there are bike lights. Ooh, I can't think of the name of them, but uh, they attach to your wheel, so they're generated. Uh, so you don't have to power them in any way besides pedaling forward, uh, which is super fun. Um, and, but I took a look, say, for example, here are my lights. I brought them. Uh, this is just a Cyglo light. I'm not keen on any particular brand. There's a lot of brands that I think do well. But I bring this up to say I looked up the lumens that I use for it. And the lumens are a really... Uh, uh, lumens look different on different lights, you know, so it's not a hard and fast 600 will be fine. Um, and it looks different. Um, and, but this one at its brightest is about 650 lumens, which is pretty darn bright. And hardly ever do I actually use that much. Um, maybe when I'm all by myself in the very dark, do I use it? And for something like a, a backlight, which this is a really bright one, I looked it up and it's only 260. Because for my backlights, I'm not using it to see anything. I'm just using it to be seen. So it doesn't need to be near as bright. Some important things to mention about lights as well is that for both your back and your rear, your back and your front light, I recommend running them straight, so not blinking, especially for the front. The reason why is that usually blink blinking lights are recommended for emergency vehicles. So technically under uh, Washington bike laws, you're not supposed to have blinking white lights at all. Um, also, more of the reason for me is that it's hard to tell how fast an object is moving when all you see is a blinking light. There are a good amount of studies on this too, that if a blinking light is coming towards you, it's harder to guess how fast it's moving versus a straight light. It can also be uh, disorienting to people seeing it. Uh, that's why you hear stories of folks running into the back of ambulances with all their lights. It's not that they don't see them, but they can be disorienting. So that's why I recommend um, just riding with uh, them going straight. There are some lights that have just like extra pulses, like this backlight has extra pulses. So it has a red light that's on all the time and just pulses. And I'll do that. Um, but again, not completely on or off. Um, front light, this is also important. Um, and when you're angling your front light, you want to angle it a little bit down. A, because that will actually help you see the area that's right in front of you better. And B, it will be less blinding to the people coming up, both cars and bikers. Um, and 
And you know it, I think everybody has had it where white lights are coming at you. So it just try and angle it down. Uh, so it's illuminating, I don't know, maybe 10 feet in front of you. Um, that's just an estimation. Um, also when people are passing, I usually partially cover my light just as a courtesy. I don't fully cover it, but just partially because I know that lights can be a little blinding. Um, and, ah, someone also had a really great question about how to attach your lights to your bike. Um, and Joss brought up this interesting thing that they attached it to their front stem on the side uh, because they're running out of room on the top. Um, and, but really whatever attachments you can find work uh, feel free to use extra rubber rubber from other things to attach it wherever you want to. I used to have one on the top of my helmet like this, so it went wherever I went, and then I just had a small one on my bike. I'm going to share my screen a second, because I found this thing, which I realized, here we go. I almost forget to actually share. There we go. Uh, I found this thing. I'm very excited about it. I never knew the term, but it's a handlebar extender, um, which is fantastic because say you have a little bike computer on your bike, say you have um, a, another reflector that you want, you also want to put your phone on there, you also want your bike light, you might not have a lot of space. So this is just a way to literally extend your handlebars farther or just give you more options. Um, I think it's so neat. Uh, see, I'm going to stop sharing here. I'm going to check the chat. But I think that's most of my information about lights. If anybody has questions about lights, will I look at these chat questions? Oh, interesting. So Jennifer brought up the really good point. Um, she was thinking about getting frame lights for the wheels frames. Um, but on the wheels, it will look blinking from spokes. Ah, so maybe just on frames. That's a good question. Okay, let's talk about that first. So I'm gonna showcase my bike a second because I have, uh, I just put lights on my front wheel um, to use for just that reason, that then I'm more visible from the side. They also just make me really happy. So two things to think about. I'm not sure you can see them so well since it's kind of light now, but um, it's just this lovely glowing green light and they're pretty inexpensive. Um, and I've also had ones before that were just on a couple spokes. And I don't think you have to be worried about those so much as far as blinking because they're going to be moving pretty quick. Um, and, and if people aren't really judging how fast you're going by those lights, hopefully you have on other lights as well. Uh, so I wouldn't worry too much about that as far as if they're blinking or not. I think any lights that you can have on your side are fantastic. Great, thank you. So let's see, Suzanne had a question. Oh, talk about the helmet ones. Great, let me put this on. Um, and you'll find online that um, I think for this one too, and for a lot of uh, helmet lights, they can act as just any normal light. It's just a different sort of attachment that you can use to put it on your helmet. The benefit of that for me is say, if I am riding on a trail in the dark and I want to be able to look around and if I get spooked, cause I get spooked easy, um, I can see what's on my sides and it moves with me versus um, it's kind of stuck to my handlebars, but there's a good amount of attachments for helmets. I've also kind of jimmy raked my own sometimes just out of uh, rubber straps before, whatever keeps it nice and secure, but there's a good amount of different helmet attachments that you can purchase. Uh, did that answer your question, Suzanne? Let's see, sorry, I'm losing myself. Ah, yes, can you control the angle of helmet lights? 
I believe so. I think it depends on where you put it. Again, I don't have a lot of experience with helmet lights, um, but you could control a little bit. Uh, when I was passing other people in, and if I had it on and bright, I'd usually just cover it or I'd kind of look the other way, et cetera. Uh, literally not figuratively look the other way. Um, let's see. She also asked, were those tire rim lights made for bikes? Yes, they were. I think they were $10 at the max. Uh, there's this little battery pack in the middle uh, that you put right onto the hub. Um, and, but there's more um, lights that go right on your spokes like that or right on your wheel that are specifically made for bikes. I think they're so much fun. Um, kid on my bike. We can talk about that later if you'd like, Jennifer. Um, and, Let's talk through some more of this gear stuff. And then I think we'll have time for any kid questions as well. Handlebar extenders, whimsy. Yep, those are great. Um, handlebar extenders, I think you can, um, I just found, I just Googled it and found this picture. Um, I bet if you ask around in any bike shop, especially, um, uh, what is it called? Recycled Cycles has a lot of secondhand parts and I bet they might have a couple bike uh, handlebar extenders. Um, and they look relatively inexpensive. You know, it doesn't seem like a massive purchase. Yeah, I love my disco lights too. Um, Marlow spoke reflectors, I think are a great idea. Um, again, there, I, there's not a lot of like, even this light doesn't give off like a lot of light. So it's just a little bit of extra reflection, especially, um, and we'll talk about this a little bit more in regards to jackets and things, but the more reflective things you can have, especially things that are moving, the better. That's why those like snap bracelet things that you can put on your ankles um, are really actually incredibly effective because they move and you see it moving. So definitely um, spoke reflectors are lovely. Oh, gotcha. Okay, great. Um, so if there's no other questions about lights specifically, uh, then we'll talk a little bit about um, jackets, jackets and pants, if that's all right with everybody. Good. Great. Excellent. I, I like these thumbs up. <laughs> it makes me feel like I'm doing good. Um, so jackets and pants. Uh, You can go all the way from just like a normal a rain jacket to spending hundreds and hundreds on rain jackets, rain pants, all this stuff. Um, like what I was saying earlier, just start with what you have. Start with what you got. And that will also help inform you of, oh, this feels clammy or, oh, like this actually doesn't keep out the rain so well, or this isn't long enough in the back. That'll show you what you do want. Two things to think about when you're bike riding specifically is uh, how reflective is it? How seen am I? Um, and so there's two different terms which are high vis and reflective. So for example, this is a jacket that I love, which we'll talk about later. This is what I always use. Um, it's pro vis. Um, and when a light hits it, it just lights up. So in the nighttime, it's super effective. But as you can tell, it is very gray. It is just gray. So it's not high vis. High vis, we're talking about like neon, yellow, green, pink, something that catches the eye in that way versus this on a cloudy day doesn't really actually catch your eye. So it, say if I'm riding during the daytime with this, I usually actually put on a high vis vest over it, which super inexpensive to get and definitely worth the purchase. When you're going up in price with things like jackets, um, pants, etc., what's going to improve is the breathability, the durability, um, the fit of it, and the weight. Um, all those things will get better and better and better as you go up in price points. So um, generally something in the middle, I think is worth it. A jacket like this, I think cost me about $100, um, but I've used it every day for the past like four years a bit. 
and it's kept me dry and it's kept me seen. So things like that are worth investing in, in my opinion. As far as keeping warm in them, um, some things, some jackets and pants can be lined as well for like really winter riding. What I do is I usually wear uh, something that's breathable as my base layer, some sort of athletic wear. And if it's really cold, I'll just put on some sort of sweater. A lot of people like wool. Wool breathes really nicely actually. Um, and, and then I'll put on my jacket, but loose big layers are primo. They're great. And that's what I recommend when you're buying jackets as well. This jacket is actually a little bit big for me, um, and, but which means it keeps me warmer versus if it was pretty skin tight, uh, it doesn't have enough room to trap that air. Let's see, I'm just gonna check out our chats actually a second. Let's see. My question is on eyewear. Oh, eyewear and avoiding debris. That's a great question. Um, oh, and Suzanne, um, a plus size rider having trouble finding gear. Um, there's a specific site that I'd like to recommend to you called Machines for Freedom. Um, you're exactly right that finding plus size wear um, for uh, especially female riders is incredibly difficult. It's a way that I think our industry is changing, but slowly. Um, so I'll put it here in the chat, machines for freedom. Um, they're great. I think it's relatively high end. Um, and also in Marley Blonsky is a really great voice here in Seattle um, and for plus size riders. Um, and she has a lot of great resources. I'm pretty sure that's how you spell her name, but she's a great one to follow because she will tell you about all the resources, all the bibs, all the jerseys, all that that you can wear. Um, yes, so really great question. Um, let me get back to whimsies, which is, is on eyewear and avoiding debris coming into my eyes behind my glasses. Yes, you're welcome, Suzanne. Um, one thing, let me get it. Hold on, I'll be right back. I really find that um, and having cycle, cycling caps like this are extremely useful, um, and not only for in the sun in the summer, they look very like, I'm a biker, but they are actually super helpful because um, this brim is just long enough to keep rain from getting in my eyes. So I actually notice more when I'm not wearing it in the winter because um, this keeps the rain out. As far as uh, glasses fogging up or debris getting behind them, I know there's a couple like sprays and solutions that you can put on your lenses themselves, depending on what they're made out of, that helps the droplets roll off faster. Um, there are such things too as kind of like cycling goggles, but I don't know as much about that, but that's definitely a product you can look into. Um, I'm sorry, I don't have more of an answer for that, um, but does that help give you a way to move forward with that? Um, Whimsy. Great, thank you, Ben. Okay, great. Um, four jackets and pants. Yeah, that's what I recommend. Think about reflective, high vis, um, and, and just try something. Go on the recommendation of friends. Um, and, Showers Pass is a really great brand. Uh, I'll actually put both these in the chat too. Um, but Showers Pass is a great brand that, there we go. And sorry, I can't think and talk at the same time. Those are the two names that I wanted you to get, Suzanne. Um, but Showers Pass is right down in Portland. I just bought a pair of um, pants from them, like bright neon pants. Um, and, and they're wonderful, definitely worth it. Provis is where is a UK brand uh, that's highly reflective. But there's a lot of great brands out there. Um, and so choose what you want to you know, spend your money on if you want to um, just invest in a purchase like that. But also, again, start with what you got. 
Um, and that's all I have for jackets and pants. Um, and as far as gloves and uh, footwear, a lot of people for footwear, if you have clip-in shoes, um, a lot of folks really enjoy uh, booties. They're just like, they can be, um, they could be more suited for warmth or more suited for dryness, but you can pull them on right over your shoes and zip them up or clip them up in the back. And they have space that your clips are still available so you can clip in. A bunch of folks really enjoy those. They help keep their feet warmer during the winter. Um, what I ride in, cause I don't uh, wear clip-ins just I don't, um, and, but so it, I'm just gonna show my shoes a second. <laughs> um, and I just ride in boots. Um, these boots are uh, from Chrome, so they're riding boots and they are a little bit more flexible here and they have this um, reflective spot here. Um, and, but since they're a little bit bigger um, and they're made of leather, they keep my feet just really nice and toasty paired with you know wool socks or thick socks. Um, I've never had a trouble uh, keeping warm with wearing boots like that. And again, because they're nice and big, um, they give you room to wear other stuff underneath. Sure, they're a little bit heavier, but it's worth it to me. Um, and same kind of thoughts about gloves. Um, if you want to double layer gloves, that's great. There's some gloves that uh, are like this. They're called little lobster gloves. And um, they're a large, they're large and they can go over um, thinner gloves. And that's what I use during the winter. Some folks also have handlebar mitts, which they're super cool. They're like just little antlers on your handlebars and you can stick your whole hands in them. And it's just a way to keep them, um, keep the wind off of them, keep the rain off of them. Uh, so a lot of folks in the winter, especially in snowy areas, really like handlebar mitts. I think that's most of what I have as far as gear recommendation, jackets, shoes, pants, etc. So we talked about riding, how your riding style may change. We talked about um, maintenance, doing different bike maintenance things, and gear. Does anyone have any questions that I missed? I may have missed some in the chat, so feel free to just say them out loud or any other questions that you have. We still have probably like five, six minutes for questions. So I'm all ears. Oh, I don't have lobster. I have them at home. I have lobster gloves at home, but let me look at what I'm talking about a second. Because they're fun and they do actually keep your hands. There we go. I'm just gonna share this screen. They do keep your hands nice and warm. So just like these, I think the Pearl Izumi are actually what I have. Um, again, they can be lined or they can just be plasticky, uh, just like a plastic coating on the outside. Um, and, and some people don't like shifting with those. They can be a little weird, but as you see on this red one, they separate your first finger from your other third and that makes it easier, but they're fun. Handy, thank you. I'm gonna stop sharing. Great, and feel free to either put it in the chat or just speak out loud, either are fine. Um, and Suzanne asked, are the wind resistant tights helpful? Ah, that's a good question. So I have, uh, I have two pairs of tights. One are thinner and one are thicker. Um, and and I actually find the thinner ones to be really nice too, especially on days and weather like this, when it, it's not cold, it's just windy. Um, and I find them to make a huge difference. And it's just like a base layer, say if you get rain pants that you can pull them over. Um, I think tights, good tights are always an excellent purchase. Let's see, Kat asked, how many layers do you usually wear in midwinter? <laughs> It depends for everybody. And it depends how long I'm gonna be out. I, I get very warm. I get very warm. I, so if I start all bundled up and nice and cozy, how I want to go outside about 10 minutes into the ride, I'm way too hot. I'm just sweating. It's a sauna in there. Uh, so I usually actually 
usually just wear two layers. I usually a base layer of athletic wear and a jacket. Sometimes I'll wear a light sweater underneath, but for me, it's more important to keep my fingers, my toes, my ears all covered. Um, and that's what makes me feel like warm versus more, uh, more on my torso. Good question, Kat. Let's see. Lindsay asked, oh, good question. Um, and, no, I think this is good information to um, talk about it again, Lindsay. Um, do I need different tires for winter rain riding with a road bike, particularly, particularly on hills? Um, and you don't need, you don't need, are they helpful? Yes, but I've ridden most of my years with slick tires during the winter. Um, you just have to be really aware of traction. You can just give yourself a lot of time with that braking. Um, and know that with slick tires, you're not going to be as effective as stopping as something with a little bit of grip. So what I mentioned is helpful for road bikes too, and I just did this on my personal bike, is to purchase bike tires with siping. Um, and, and I'll type that out a second because that's, I just learned this recently, siping. Um, and, and so it's not tread, it's kind of inverse tread. Um, and it keeps the water away from the tire and gives a little bit more grip. Uh, but again, it's helpful, not needed, but very helpful. Uh, ben asked, what do you use for your ears? Great question, actually. Uh, I didn't mention it, so you're, you still get an A plus for listening. Um, I actually just use a gator, usually, like one of these things, and I'll just pull it over my head. This is very fashionable. Um, because it's really just the wind on my ears like this, and I put my cap under it usually. Um, some folks like something thicker. There's a local brand called, let's see, Toast Tea, I think Threads, um, that make cycling caps with a bit thicker um, flaps for the ears, and they're lovely, they're wonderful. Um, some people just wear headbands, whatever it that's a very like whatever works for you question and that's what i do let's see we have just a couple minutes left so cat asked do you wear two pairs of socks i uh, i do not some folks may but i i i just wear a thicker one pair of socks and i think with a roomy boot that really helps to keep it warm uh, I really recommend it. Like wool socks are really great for athletic wear like this. Also, um, I usually actually wear darn tough socks because they have a lifetime guarantee and they are like very well fitted um, and nice and thick. So I'd rather uh, just get a nice thick pair of socks to wear under. But again, whatever works the best for you. Let's see. Jennifer asked, any extra things to carry with us for wet winter weather weather? wet weather, winter weather, that I maybe haven't already considered, like emergency items, tools, whatever. Oh, that's a really good question. Um, hmm. I think I'm always, I usually make sure to take extra layers with me and extra dry layers, because I think about if I get a flat, and I have to fix my bike or get home some other way. Do I want to be wearing this the whole time? What's going to make it more comfortable? So I, <laughs> I honestly travel with an extra pair of socks quite free, frequently, um, or an extra pair of gloves, um, extra underlayer, et cetera. Um, so that if I have to stop and repair, what's going to make me hate it less, <laughs> you know, um, if you're going on, say bike packing in the winter, I think that's an even bigger question of what would you take with you for winter camping? Um, but as far as emergency, other emergency things, I don't think so much, just extra layers. At least that's what I think personally. Thank you. Um, oh, great. That's a good recommendation, recommendation, Suzanne. I got a nice waltz wool cap with ear covers. That does sound lovely. Um, and Joss swears by alpaca wool socks. Oh, that sounds luxurious, but wonderful. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Um, and so Suzanne had, was saying, is there such a thing as flat fix for bike tires that might be worth carrying in the winter so you can keep going? That's a great question. Um, and I'll just answer that quickly and then we'll wrap up. Um, and if you're running with tubes, um, and unfortunately, usually, usually the answer is you just got to change your tubes. But if you're starting to go tubeless, which more people are, um, you need specific rims and specific tires. But um, essentially, a way to fix to a way to fix flats with a tubeless tire is just there's basically this bottle of glue, glue gunk, that you kind of put in through your valve, and then as you rotate your tire, it seals it up. And that's a very quick explanation. But so I've seen that more folks use that and then they just pump it up a little bit. It seems like a really effective way to fix your tires in the winter. And Elise said, I signed up for the Ride in the Rain Challenge for free. Uh, if, I made, if I made a team, would anyone here want to join? That's a really great uh, suggestion, Elise. I'm going to be doing Ride in the Rain. Uh, I'm excited for it. Um, yes, uh, so thank you everyone so much for uh, coming and uh, having your really good suggestions. I really appreciate getting to talk about this riding in the rain. Again, just go out, just go out and do it because you figure out things as you go. Um, you figure out what works well for you, what doesn't, what doesn't work well, what you do want to invest in, what you don't really care about. Um, and just the big thing is just try it. Um, so thank you again for joining. Uh, if you want to stick around, I'm just going to be hanging out for a little bit if you have final questions, but feel free to get on with your day and have fun riding in the rain this winter. <laughs>